Hmm. Hello, my name is Mark McLeod, and I'm recording this talk before the 19th McLeod Clan Parliament on the Isle of Skye. I'm one of the two volunteers who oversee the McLeod DNA projects at Family Tree DNA, which is a DNA testing company based in Houston, Texas. They're leaders in the field of genetic genealogy, which uses DNA to help with genealogical studies. My colleague Rod McLeod and I recently took over the role from Tim McLeod, who very sadly passed away last year. I'd like to recognize Tim's incredible contribution to the understanding of our clan's DNA. I'd also like to recognize James Blount McLeod, who was there at the very beginning of these projects until his retirement last year. To be clear, I'm not a geneticist. DNA and genealogy is more of a serious hobby that, as I like to say, keeps me out of the bars. I hope that you'll enjoy this talk today and you'll be pleased to know that I've left out most of the technical jargon, but there are some tricky concepts. Today I'll be talking about using DNA to learn about our clan's history and genealogy. It's an exciting time to be talking about this because the science behind using DNA for genealogical studies has made incredible advances over the last several years. Now, I bet that most of you have studied your own McLeod family genealogy. And based on this, you may consider yourself part of the Harrison Dunvegan branch of McLeods or the Lewis and later Rassi branch of McLeods. Or maybe you're not sure. In either case, you likely know that both branches are thought to descend from Loud, the founder of the clan. But is Loud really our common ancestor? I really wish the answer was a simple yes. Unfortunately, it's a bit more complicated, but perhaps more interesting. Let me cut to the chase before I dive into the details. Part of the punchline today is that DNA shows us that most all McLeod men can be placed into one of five genetically distinct groups, and that one of these groups, the largest one, appears to descend directly from Loud along their paternal line, either through the Harrison Dunvegan branch or the Lewis and Rassi branch. The other part of the punchline is that by using DNA, we can show that most all McLeods, women and men, will likely have a female ancestor leading directly back to Loud. So one way or another, most all of us will have a connection directly back to Loud. I'll speak to four main topics today. I'll start with a review of the genealogy of the first few McLeod chiefs. Then I'll provide a high level overview of DNA test and DNA matching. And fair warning, this part may get just a bit complicated. Next, I'll summarize the history and main findings of our society's longstanding research into the DNA of Clan McLeod. And finally, I'll show how we've used DNA to find our common McLeod ancestors, including Loud. As I've looked into my own family's genealogy, it's clear that the history of the Highlands in Scotland and genealogy go hand in hand. More recently, we are seeing DNA and archeology span provide fascinating and completely new information about the path our ancestors took to where we are today. And I'll show you some of that today. So let's start by reviewing the top of the family tree of McLeod, starting with Loud, the founder of the clan. Our society's website says that Loud was born around the year 1215, and he is thought to be of Norse descent. Loud had a son named Tormod, who had at least two sons. First, Malcolm, who became the third chief and the leader of the Harris and Dunvegan branch McLeods. And second, Murdoch, who had a son named Torkel Og, who became the first chief of the Lewis branch of McLeods. I've highlighted his name in red because we're going to hear a lot more about him later on. About 200 years later, a descendant of Torkel Og named Malcolm became the first chief of the Rassi branch of McLeods. So, assuming all this is correct, no matter which branch of McLeods we're part of, Loud is our common ancestor. Therefore, we should all be genetically linked to one another because all branches lead back to Loud, right? To find out, we need, need to take a DNA test. So now let's talk about DNA test and DNA matching. Here I'm showing what's called a pedigree tree from a cloud man who's been DNA tested. This tree format is different than a typical family tree like we saw in the last slide. A pedigree tree starts with the youngest individual and only shows their direct paternal 
and maternal ancestors. There are no aunts, uncles, or cousins. It's a useful display because this man inherited his DNA only from these ancestors. In case you're wondering, a DNA test involves a simple cheek swab or a bit of spit into a tube. You mail it off, you get your results about two months later, and they range in price from about 50 pounds to 350 pounds. The first type of DNA test that I'll be speaking about today is called a Y-DNA test. As its name implies, a Y-DNA test only looks at the male Y chromosome, so only men can take these tests. As the slide shows, Y-DNA is inherited only along what's called the paternal line. Your paternal line is your line of direct male ancestors. In a minute, I'll talk more about how we use these tests in our study. The second and by far the most common type of DNA test today is what I'll call an all ancestor DNA test, otherwise known as an autosomal test. This man's all ancestor DNA test will evaluate the DNA that he's inherited from all of these ancestors, hence my made up name. They're useful for looking back only about six to seven generations. Both men and women can take these tests and they're quite inexpensive. Tens of millions of people from around the world today have taken these tests from companies such as Ancestry and Family Tree DNA. Towards the end, I'll talk more about these tests when we consider the often overlooked contribution of a female McLeod's DNA. The third type of DNA test is far less common and I'll only mention it here briefly today. It's called an mtDNA test, short for mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is passed along the maternal line shown here and it is passed from a mother to both her sons and daughters. Today, mtDNA tests are used mostly by archaeologists and geneticists as they study ancient human remains. Okay, let's now talk more about the Y-DNA test. Before I go on, we should acknowledge that there's a clear male bias in all of this. McLeod clan chiefs almost always passed on their leadership roles to their sons. Published McLeod genealogies almost always focus on McLeod men. The McLeod surname is passed down the paternal line. And now we have a powerful DNA analysis technique that is limited to men. That said, let's now talk about that powerful DNA analysis technique. If you're a man, you inherited a copy of your father's Y chromosome, which was a copy of his father's Y chromosome, and so on up the line. It works almost like the inherited surname, but not quite. So what is, is it about the Y chromosome that makes it useful? In a word, it's all about mutations. Let me show you how it works. Let's start at the top with a man born in the year 1690. He will have inherited about 3,000 small mutations on his Y chromosome from all his paternal ancestors going back hundreds of thousands of years. These mutations are generally harmless and are sometimes described as simple copying errors when a father's Y chromosome is copied to create a son. Typically, about every hundred years or so, a new mutation will appear in one of his male descendants, and we'll call this new mutation, mutation A. In about another hundred years, another male descendant could be born with mutation B. Then, a man born in the year 1960 takes a Y-DNA test that will show that he's inherited all of these 3,000 early mutations plus the new mutations A and B. Now, imagine it that at some point earlier in this paternal line, a father actually had two sons. As you can see, descendants of this second son, who has started a completely new branch, they'll inherit mutation A, but not mutation B. This branching concept is at the core of genetic genealogy. Let me elaborate. These 3,000 early mutations have been studied by geneticists and archaeologists for years. They put them in chronological order, and they've identified roughly where the man first born with the mutation once lived, and they've even estimated when he was born. Given new test results like these, they can place this man on the tree of humankind 
which currently has over 70,000 branches. It's complicated, but pretty neat stuff. An important concept throughout this talk is DNA matching. We've all heard about this before in crime stories where the DNA found at a crime scene matches the DNA of a suspect. But here I'm talking about finding a DNA match between this McLeod man and a relative who has been DNA tested. For example, imagine this man's great grandparents along his paternal line had another son who had a son who had a son who has taken a Y DNA test. The Y DNA test of these two McLeod men who are second cousins will match because they'll share the same mutations on their Y chromosome. Their common paternal ancestor is their grandfather. And this really is the logic behind getting a bunch of McLeod men to take a Y DNA test. Do they share a common ancestor who may turn out to be Loud or one of his male descendants? If so, can we learn more about the genealogy of the clan if enough McLeod men are tested? The branching concept that we just saw for Y DNA test is also true for all ancestor DNA tests. Like before, imagine this man's great grandparents along his paternal line had a second son who had a son who then had a daughter who was taken an all ancestor DNA test. Remember, she doesn't have a Y chromosome, so she can't take a Y DNA test. This McLeod woman and this McLeod man are second cousins and part of their all ancestor DNA will be an exact match because they both inherited the same bits of DNA from these great grandparents, their common ancestors. Okay, that's it for the DNA lesson today. I'll now show you how we've used Y DNA tests from lots of McLeod men. And then towards the end of the talk, I'll show how we've used DNA from McLeod women to wonderfully join together genetically unrelated McLeod men. Our McLeod Society has been studying the DNA of Clan McLeod for about 20 years. This long-standing study is well documented on the Society's website. In 2004, ACMS sponsored a study that was led by Julia Abernethy at the University College London. This was at a time when the science behind using DNA for genealogical studies was just being developed. In her study, which involved hundreds of McLeod men, she found that 32% of these men were genetically similar and they shared a common ancestor who was born around the year 1000. The rest of the men fell into one of many other groups who were genetically distinct from one another and genetically distinct from this larger group. That same year, ACMS set up the McLeod Surname Project at Family Tree DNA, the DNA testing company based in Houston. The idea was to recruit and share the Y DNA test results from as many McLeod men as possible. A while later, ACMS set up the McLeod SEPS project as a place for members of the various SEPS of the McLeod clan to share their results. My focus today will be on the McLeod surname project. Then in 2018, Tim McLeod published an article in the Clan McLeod magazine where he showed that 65% of Y DNA tested McLeod men shared a particular mutation called RBY3210 and that these men were likely descendants of the founder of the clan. For this talk, I'm going to simplify the name of this mutation and call it M1 for mutation 1. The current estimate is the man first born with this mutation was born around the year 1000, just like the Abernathy study, or about 200 years before Loud. Okay, so where are we today with the McLeod Surname Project? Today, the McLeod Surname Project has 572 members and it's growing, but slowly. In this chart, I'm showing the total count of the different types of DNA tests that our members have taken. As the project has evolved over the years, so is the science behind DNA testing. About 20 years ago, the Y DNA test shown here in blue on the left evaluated only 12 positions on the Y chromosome called markers. The gold standard today is called the big Y test where they evaluate 700 markers on the Y chromosome. In short, we learn more genetic information as more markers are tested.
you can see that about 175 project members have taken the big Y test and over 200 members have taken the all ancestor DNA test. We can learn a lot about the DNA of Clan McLeod from this very rich data set. If all Y-DNA tested McLeod men shared the same ancient Y-DNA, we could say they all descended from one man who presumably would be loud. But as we've seen in the Abernethy study and Tim McLeod's paper, it appears that only a subset of these McLeod men lead directly back to Loud along their paternal line. In the next few slides, I'll suggest a possible explanation for this. Let me use this simple tree diagram to describe the genetic differences between the McLeod men in our study. At the bottom of the tree is the notional first modern human man nicknamed Adam of Africa, who was a man born about 300,000 years ago. Literally, everyone in the world today descends from this man. As descendants of Adam wandered the world in search of food, they branched out and headed into, di into different directions and started diverse cultures of people. And one of these branches included the ancestors of the McLeods. In our McLeod project today, we find that there are 140 McLeod men who share the M1 mutation which, as Tim McLeod reported, is the key mutation that indicates that a man descends from Loud along his paternal line. These 140 McLeod men would then be found at individual twigs at the end of this one branch. I've called these McLeods part of Group A. About 4,000 years before M1 was born, we see two groups of people that branched off and headed in different directions. We find 41 McLeod men on this red branch that I've labeled Group B and 16 McLeod men on the green branch I've labeled Group C. At other branch points that happened thousands of years earlier, we see two groups comprising in total 88 McLeod men on the yellow and pink branches that I've called Groups D and E. As the tree shows, all these McLeod men are clearly not paternal line descendants of the same man living about a thousand years ago. In summary, 49% or almost half of the Y-DNA tested McLeod men in our study have the M1 mutation with the rest belonging in one of the four other groups. How can we explain these five genetically distinct groups of McLeods? And where do they all come from? Recall that archeologists and geneticists are now able to figure out where early cultures of people once lived and the migration paths they followed by studying ancient DNA results. Based on this work, here's the track of M1's distant ancestors as they came out of Africa into Asia and eventually into Europe and Scotland. You can think of it as M1's ancestors leaving a trail of breadcrumbs on their very long march up into Scotland. Clearly, this track doesn't represent all humans. Other groups of people branched off at these various points and headed into different directions. This is the track of Loud's ancestors. Let me point out one small but important detail. You may have noticed that, that M1's ancestors seem to have jumped right from France directly into Scotland. But note that there is no light blue dot on this path representing the Bronze Age, which lasted over a thousand years. There would have been plenty of time for M1's ancestors to travel from France into Scandinavian countries before arriving into Scotland, which would be consistent with the view that Loud was of Norse descent. Archaeologists are still looking for those particular Bronze Age breadcrumbs. But what about the other groups, B through E? What path did they travel before arriving in Scotland? Here in the middle is part of the path we just looked at for the group A McLeods. The group B McLeods on the red branch had ancestors who took a different path, apparently walking through England on their way up to Scotland. Most of this, the group C McLeods on the green branch had ancestors who took a path through Scandinavian countries before arriving in Scotland. And finally, McLeods in groups D and E also had ancestors who once lived in Scandinavian countries before arriving in Scotland centuries later. It's possible these last three groups were part of the Viking invasion. 
The image this creates for me is one of four diverse groups of people who arrived in Scotland. Some walked, some arrived by ship, and they lived amongst the MacLeod clan, the descendants of Loud. These diverse groups may have assumed the MacLeod surname for one reason or another, perhaps so they would be protected by the clan, or perhaps because they supported the clan in battle. We just don't know. But we see this in other Scottish clans, and there's no reason to think the MacLeod clan would be any different. So that's the big picture going far back in time. Let's now bring the discussion a little closer to home as you think about your own genealogy and DNA. Let me show you a real example of five MacLeod men who are trying to figure out how they fit into the genealogy of Clan MacLeod, both before and after a Y-DNA test. On the left, we're looking at the paternal line of a key member of our MacLeod project. As you can see, he's in the enviable position of being a descendant of a Rassi clan chief. He notes that his earliest known ancestor is Torkel Og MacLeod, first of Lewis, born in 1320. As I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the Rassi chiefs descend from Torkel Og, who descend from Loud. So this MacLeod man can claim a direct paternal line link back to Loud assuming the clan genealogy is correct. The next MacLeod has done a lot of genealogical work to learn that his earliest known ancestor is Norman MacLeod, born around 1809 on Skye. But then he runs into the proverbial brick wall of genealogy that we've all seen when we run out of paper records. As you likely know, the old parish records from the late 1700s are woefully incomplete. And the first census on Scotland was in 1841. So unless your family was part of the line of chiefs, it's unlikely early paper records exist. The next MacLeod is me. And like the previous tester, my earliest known ancestor was a Norman MacLeod, born a bit earlier from Rassie. The fourth tested MacLeod is a well-established paternal line from the Isle of Lewis. And the fifth tested MacLeod is himself from Rassie, with an earliest known ancestor from the mainland of Scotland. Except for the first tester, we've all run into this brick wall, and without Y-DNA testing, we have no idea if or how we might be related to one another. Our earliest known ancestors are spread far and wide with no obvious connection. So, how did Y-DNA testing help us? Did it help us get over the brick wall? Yes, it did. Y-DNA testing now shows that we all share a common ancestor. This is a man who was estimated to be born in 1322 with a mutation named FT6192. We do see some branching below this man, and I've left out some genealogical detail, but clearly, again, since we all have this mutation in our Y-DNA, FT6192 is our common ancestor. You may have already noticed that the birth year estimates of Torkel Og MacLeod and FT6192 are darn near identical, which is a very nice coincidence. So you've got to ask yourself if Torkel Og was the man first born with this particular mutation. I'm going to assume that they're one and the same. I could easily be off a generation or two, but the message would be the same. We are all descendants of the early Lewis MacLeods, and some of us likely descend from the Rassi branch of MacLeods, which came later. Tester number one gives us confidence that we are all linked back to the Chiefly line of MacLeods. Let's now bring it back to the top of the Chiefly line that we started with at the beginning of the talk. As we said, the man first born with the M1 mutation appears to have been born about 200 years before Loud. If we add in the Y-DNA test results from those on the Lewis and Rassi branch of MacLeods, we see that there are four sub-branches below Torkel Og based on 43 big Y tested MacLeods. Note that three MacLeods on this branch have some independent genealogical evidence that their paternal line leads back to the Chiefly line. We saw one of these in the previous slides. On the Harrison Dunvegan branch, Based on 21 big Y tested MacLeods, we see three main Y DNA subbranches who lead back to Loud, possibly through Malcolm, Loud's grandson. 
two of these tested McLeods have a possible genealogical link leading back to the Chiefly line. We'd love to be able to attach names to these mutations or at least identify the particular branch of McLeods associated with each mutation. Let's just say it's a work in progress. Again, I've left out a fair bit of genealogical detail, which is just to say that there's a lot more information provided by a big Y test than shown here. And as more McLeod men get tested, more detail gets added to the tree. Overall, I find this extremely encouraging that these Y-DNA test results are conforming to the traditions passed down through the centuries about the overall structure of the clan, particularly the two branches shown here. It's mutually reaffirming. Let's now quickly recap what we've learned from McLeod Y-DNA test and why we think that the M1 mutation leads back to the chiefly line of McLeods. First, five McLeods with the M1 mutation have some level of independent genealogical support that their paternal line leads back to the chiefly line of McLeods. I'm unaware of anyone from groups B through E who claims a direct paternal line link back to the chiefly line. As we've seen, the group of McLeods with the M1 mutation are proportionally the largest group in the project. And the birth year estimates generally fit with the established clan genealogy. Torkel Ogg's birth year in the early 1300s is perhaps the best example of this. The McLeods with the M1 mutation frequently match each other because their common paternal line ancestors are more recent and in the chiefly line. Conversely, the McLeods in groups B through E have very few McLeod matches and they generally don't share a common paternal line ancestor within the last 2,000 years. Okay, enough about Y DNA. Let's now talk about DNA inherited from all ancestors, including women. If we are correct in saying that the five groups of McLeods were living together in Scotland back in the day, we can safely assume that they intermarried. And men from the four groups who may have assumed the McLeod surname would therefore at times marry women who are direct descendants of Loud. If true, McLeods in all five groups would share common ancestors. Let's now look at double A DNA, which as we've said, is inherited from all ancestors, including women. And remember that if two people are all ancestor DNA matches, then they share a common ancestor somewhere in their tree. This slide is meant to emphasize how common intermarriage was in the Highlands of Scotland. This is a pedigree tree for an actual MacLeod man born on the Isle of Rassie, and it's by no means unusual. Anyone in red had the MacLeod surname at birth. We can see that both of his parents and three out of four of his grandparents were MacLeods. At the great-great-grandparent level, nine out of 16 were MacLeods. The first point of this slide is to remind us that MacLeods have married MacLeods for centuries. MacLeod was often the most common surname in a region, and you couldn't help but marry another MacLeod or somebody closely related to a MacLeod. Based on Y-DNA test re results for a close relative, this man is very likely a Group A MacLeod descendant from Loud along his paternal line. But there are several other MacLeods who could well be from one of the four other groups. Looking at this man's all ancestor DNA test results, we see that he matches MacLeods from all five groups. This likely means that some of these other MacLeods in his tree are from groups B through E. Let's now look at another example specifically a MacLeod in Group B. Here is an example of a MacLeod man who lives on Prince Edward Island. His Y-DNA test results showed that he was a Group B MacLeod, one of those groups who likely assumed the MacLeod surname far back in time. His paternal line leads to Alexander, who therefore is not a direct paternal line descendant of Loud. However, when looking at this man's all ancestor DNA test results, we see that he matches 13 group A McLeods, the group of men who are likely direct paternal line descendants of Loud. How can we explain this? Clearly, this group B McLeod is related to group A McLeods 
and they share a common ancestor. If you look at other parts of his tree, we see that Alexander married Mary MacLeod from Rassie, and Mary's parents were Donald and Christine MacLeod. Based on my research, I believe that both Donald and Christine were direct paternal line descendants of Loud. So this group B MacLeod is also a direct descendant of Loud, not along his paternal line, but through a maternal connection. This is far from an isolated example. In fact, when looking at all members of groups B through E, we find that 75% are also all ancestor DNA matches to group A MacLeods. So, repeating the punchline from the beginning of the talk, it's likely that MacLeods in all five genetic groups will have a connection to Loud either along their paternal line or through a maternal connection or both. Bringing us back to the question at the beginning of this talk, DNA test results have shown us that about half of the McLeod men are paternal line descendants of ancestors who may have assumed the McLeod surname long ago. The other half are likely direct paternal line descendants of Loud himself. Most McLeods will have a female ancestor who is a direct descendant of Loud, and therefore we can say that Loud is the common ancestor for most McLeods. I hope you've enjoyed this talk today, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video and the Society for putting the talk on the agenda for the Parliament. I'd like to thank Family Tree DNA, who has kindly offered discounts for McLeods who may want to get tested. And finally, a big thanks to the members of the McLeod Projects who have taken the DNA test and shared their results. Until we meet again.